Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be giving our entryway a farmhouse style DIY makeover on a budget. This video is filled with budget friendly DIYs that anyone can do, and I hope it gives you a ton of modern farmhouse decorating ideas and DIY inspiration for your entryway. I love sharing farmhouse makeovers as well as seasonal decorating ideas with you guys here on my channel every Wednesday and Saturday, so make sure you hit that red subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video. As you can see, our entryway was pretty boring and I had some really fun budget-friendly DIYs that I wanted to try out to transform this space and also make it functional for our family. Originally, I had tried a few different types of benches here, but at the end of the day, they just were not something that we used and they ended up being just a drop zone which collected clutter. So I decided to move one of my favorite tables to the space. This way we would have a place to drop our keys, shoes, and bags that was organized and was right there when we walked in. The first DIY in this video is a shelf. We created similar shelves in my dining room above our coffee bar using the same method and it is so affordable and easy to do. So I wanted to share the process again in today's video. planning to hang a pair of these lanterns near the shelf and I want the stain to be a similar color so I left this one here for reference. The stain that I used on my dining room shelves is a darker color. The brand is Rust-Oleum and the shade is Briar Smoke. I get a lot of questions on what color that is so I figured I would include it in this shelf tutorial. For the wood, I go to Lowe's or Home Depot and I'm usually able to find in the lumber section a pre-cut piece of just really cheap wood. Usually it's anywhere between $5 to $8, but if you need a special cut, just ask the employee and they will cut the piece for you to whichever size you need that best fits your space. So this is not a close match at all, but I think it will end up looking okay and definitely better than the darker briar smoke color would have looked. DIY number two is adding some texture to our door before I go out of my comfort zone and paint it a color other than white. I'm using the leftover wallpaper beadboard that I used on my kitchen island to add the texture to our door. I really lucked out and had just enough of this left to color the spaces I wanted to on the door. And I'm hoping with this I achieve a cottagey feel. Is cottagey even a word? I don't know. But I want to create a cottagey feel to this door. And I think a good way to do that is by adding some texture. Worn out clothes doesn't seem so long ago. Now I'm just sitting here bored at home. Got me thinking of the times we took off on the road I can't remember where we headed that night We were cruising around town in Memphis Running the lights I just know how it felt I won't forget that Windows down and open top But we were clever not to take it too far Though it's hard not getting tempted Calling you up to see how you've been Cause don't I miss you and all those things to activate the glue on the back of the wallpaper, all you need to do is soak it in water for five seconds and then it's ready to go. When I applied the wallpaper to my kitchen island, I used a wallpaper smoother just to get out any air bubbles, but since this area is so small, I'm just using my hand to smooth it out and it worked just fine. Is it 12 years since last time? Where'd 
A trick I like to do is mark the tape measure with a dry erase marker and this just helps me remember where I need to cut. Measuring is one of my least favorite parts about home projects. I like the freedom of DIYs that let me just kind of eyeball and use my creativity and just not require me to be so exact, which is probably why I prefer cooking over baking. Since these columns ended up being a lot longer, I decided to use a wet towel to activate the glue instead of soaking them in the sink, just in case they got tangled and messed up. Killing time, Friday night, found a photograph of us. I think these are going to add the perfect amount of subtle texture that I had in mind for this door. Luckily, the stain dried quickly and I was able to flip it and add stain to the other side of my DIY shelf within just an hour. I've always wanted a green front door, and I couldn't tell you why, but I have just been so nervous to try it up until now. But I figure the worst that can happen is it will end up looking like an avocado, and I will absolutely hate it, and then I can just go ahead and repaint it. The shade I ended up going with is called Rosemary Plant by Kills. I found it at Walmart, and supposedly it looks lighter when wet, and then it's supposed to dry darker. So I am totally winging this color, so we will see. Hopefully it's what I have in mind. So I don't generally tape when I paint, especially small projects like a door. I find that adding and removing the tape actually takes me way longer than if I was just to carefully paint around the handles. I've painted both ways, taping, not taping, but ultimately for me, I'm always looking to save time. So not taping is just my personal preference.
DIY number three is making my own tree since all of the faux trees I've seen everywhere else are honestly just way too expensive for me. I do not understand how faux trees go for anywhere between like 80 to 100 plus dollars. It just blows my mind. So anyway, I'm trying to decide which of my planters I want to use just by setting them where they would go and seeing which one looks better. And I ended up finding these branches on Amazon for $18 for a set of two. And that is way more reasonable than spending a hundred plus dollars on just one tree. They are also about 40 inches tall. So I figured I would try to make my own tree with them. And I'm putting a piece of foam in a cup just to create as much height as I can and then I'm just gonna add the branches and honestly this turned out exactly as the tree that I envisioned for this space I wanted it to just be a subtle pop of color without overtaking the space and becoming the focal point point. and I ended up switching out the planter because I thought just balance wise having the two round shapes on either side of the table didn't look right and so I decided to go with the square planter even though I don't love the gray color I will just paint it later in this video and to add even more functionality to this space I'm just going to hang a peg rail so we can add items to it as we walk in the door I'm going to ask my husband to properly secure this with his drill gun later but I'm using some mounting tape just so I can get an idea of where to hang it and how it will look with my other decor items. I ended up finding these hanging lanterns at Kirkland's and just had to have them for this space. I thought they looked so cool. What are you doing to me? It only took one kiss to know that you're everything to me. Everything I need. So tell me now because I just have to know. White chalk paint is a DIY staple that I always have on hand. I use it all of the time to affordably repurpose items. Now back to the DIY shelves. I buy the brackets also at Home Depot or Lowe's as well, and you can buy them for as cheap as $2 a piece. And if I don't like the color of the really affordable, cheaper options of brackets, I just end up spray painting them the color that matches my space. But in this case, I just decided to leave them white. About you. Is the reason I can't 
I don't know why, but I had such anxiety about hanging items on the shiplap. We did the shiplap ourselves for so cheap by using plywood and stripping it down into eight inch pieces and then using a staple gun to secure it to the wall. And I was just nervous that the plywood was going to split if we drilled into it, but luckily we had no issues at all. So tell me, girl, cause I really wanna know Do I make you wanna run? Run away with me Do I really make you feel Like you don't need anyone Do I make you wanna run? Just be wild and free Do I really make you feel Like you don't need anyone I found this jute rug at Hobby Lobby on sale for $20 and I thought this would add a cozy feel to our entryway. I've never felt like this. What are you doing to me? I love mixing in natural elements with my decor, so I picked up some firewood to stack in between these crates, and I also thought that this would transition well into fall and Christmas, which I am so excited to decorate for. This sign, which is also a Hobby Lobby find, says, may your journey always lead you home. So naturally, I thought adding my little ceramic houses here would be the perfect touch. And to hide the foam, we are adding some packing paper. This is just going to add some height, so when we add moss, we won't have to use as much, and the moss will help give this a more realistic look. I also found this welcome sign at Hobby Lobby and I will be adding it to my door using more of that mounting tape. And there you have it you guys we completely transformed the look and feel of this entryway and made it functional for our family without spending much money doing it shopping your home and repurposing items you already have are excellent ways to do budget-friendly home makeovers like this one also adding a little paint can totally transform a space or an item i hope you enjoyed this video and make sure you subscribe for more home makeovers and decorating inspiration i upload new videos every wednesday and saturday thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next one bye Still, I'm hoping